Hi, my name is Eli. I'm a research scientist here at Cogniteam. And today in this webinar, we're going to discuss Nimbus. So Nimbus is a, is a whole new way to develop new robots and to deploy robot fleets. You need to manage all your CICD updates and you need to monitor and analyze your fleets. So Nimbus is there. But before we're going to discuss Nimbus, let us talk about a brief history about our company, about, about Cogniteam. So Cogniteam exists from 2010. And since then, we've been developing robotic software and software for robots, AI-driven software. And we've gained a lot of experience about robotics development. And we've discovered that there's a gap. There's a huge gap. There's a missing layer. And Nimbus is there to fill this gap. So what is this missing layer that I'm talking about? So if you're a robotic company, then you've probably um, developed your robotic platform and you've added some sensors and actuators and it's all about integration really, right? And you've probably installed ROS and you spent a lot of time in your unique IP. You've spent a lot of time in implementing your unique functions in, in ROS, okay? So those the behavioral functions that makes your robot unique. And then what, okay, what comes next? <laughs> you've deployed a fleet of robots and you need to perform uh, all sorts of updates and you need to monitor and analyze the data. And this is a huge missing layer. It just does not exist. And so we've created Nimbus to fill this gap. So let's, start, let's say that you're uh, starting a robotic company, right? And you've probably started with an idea maybe in some academic paper. And then you have these really smart engineering students that want to implement these ideas. So they've created a physical robot, a prototype, and probably uh, um, performed some demos and tested it in, some, in all sorts of environments. And, then, and now they are, they are ready for production, right? Or so this is their expectation. So that's it. After production, then um, the development is complete. But now they realize that the complexity is just exponential. There's a lot of missing features. So what am I talking about? Well, obviously, you already know that development is hard and it, it's very long. It takes a lot of time to test robots in the real world. So this prolongs the time for market. And it, it wants to use some tools, some tools that are specific for robotics that will allow you to shorten the time to market. And you have to perform continuous development and you need to monitor the different robots and gain data from and gain knowledge from the analytics that you perform. And you need to manage a fleet of robots and manage logs and permissions and debugging and so much more. So this is why we've created Nimbus to fill this gap. Okay, so what is Nimbus? Actually, what we want to do is to shorten time to market by allowing you to focus on your unique IP for everything else, just use Nimbus as a one-stop shop. And once you've created your product, you can use Nimbus to manage and control your fleet of robots from the cloud. So nothing is more easy. So let's start. Let's start by talking about the marketplace. So if we want you to focus on your unique IP, then you need to use ready-made components. So you can download these ready-made components from the Nimbus Hub or create your own and sell it for other robotic companies. So you can download different configurations, different algorithms in different components, and of course, install different devices. And now let's talk about the algorithms. So Nimbus comes with a library of, of a lot of algorithms, a lot of ready-made components, which you can use. So for instance, this is a skeleton detection algorithm. So it's a Nimbus component. It takes an image input and it outputs a skeleton, right? So now you can use a, a, this skeleton output and build your own, probably, um, let's say, say you're building an HRI component, a human robot interaction component that needs to detect, that needs to detect the skeleton and, and output like what the human is doing, telling you to come here or to go over there or to stop or whatever. So you can build upon ready-made components using a, drop, a drag and drop approach. And now we can discuss software development. So if you've downloaded from the hub these ready-made components, now we can just stitch them together using a simple drag and drop uh, approach. 
So for instance, here you have the Kabuki driver. So it outputs an endometry, and this is the input for the famous G-mapping algorithm. So given an endometry and a scan from the RP leader, okay, from a laser scan, from the later scan, then you can output a map. And the map is the input for an exploration algorithm that outputs a goal. And this is the famous smooth base algorithm. So given a goal, a map, a scan, an odometry, it can output a command velocity to tell the robot where to go. So as you can imagine, you can just drag and drop all these ready-made components. And from everything that is surrounding your unique IP, you can just use these ready-made components. And for your IP, you can also add your own. You can build your own Nimbus components very easily and stitch them together to these existing components and just implement from your web browser this complex robot behavior. So these complex robot behaviors becomes really easy. So once you've done that, once you have this uh, configuration, this robotic behavior, now you can test it. And as you can imagine, you, can, you need to test it in simulation. So to shorten the time to market, you can't always just test in the physical real world that takes too much time. So we've got a built-in simulation and you can have all sorts of simulating environment, environments like uh, off-road environments and uh, office environments and so on and so forth. And you can test the configuration that you've made in the simulation and the simulation runs on your browser. Okay, we're using Unity and it doesn't uh, cost you uh, cloud uh, resources and you can just test it uh, in your browser. And of course, you can also test hardware in the loop. So if you've already implemented some, let's say, um, some behavioral with uh, some uh, electronic card, then you can just test the card. You can just test the, uh, the, the Jetson or the Raspberry Pi or whatever within the simulation. And once you're happy and everything works great, you can test it in your real world and you can also monitor everything. So you can monitor how the map is being created and how the algorithm for object detection works and, and so on and so forth. So you can also test it in the real world. And once you're happy with that, you can deploy the new configuration to a single robot or to the entire fleet. Okay, so you have this fleet management tools and we can, in, which, in which you can uh, um, deploy the, a certain configuration or to revert to a different a, a past a configuration and you can see the status of all the robots and, and so on. So this tool allows you to manage a robotic fleet. You can gain all the information, look at every robot and see its streams and perform tail operations and so on and so forth. You have everything you need to manage your fleet. And now after the fleet is performing, you can uh, gain data and you can gain knowledge from applying analytics. So in Nimbus, as I told you before, it's a one-stop shop. You can just uh, create your own dashboard uh, and you can choose like all the streams and um, all the different charts, line chart, the bar chart and whatever. And you can just build the dashboard, your BI dashboard uh, in which you can get information from and probably make some business decisions that will make your fleet perform much better. Okay, and all of these features just allows you to focus on your unique IP. For everything else, use Nimbus and you can concentrate on your unique IP and this will shorten the time to market. So back to our engineers, what is different now? So they've started with some idea, okay? And they created the physical robot, the prototype, but now they're using Nimbus. So this allows them to focus on their unique IP and to be ready for the future. And now they've tested the robot in the physical environment and they mass produced it, but now they can use Nimbus to apply these robotic operations to, to perform fleet management and to gain data. So this is what have changed. Now they can use all these, all these different features of Nimbus to manage and maintain their fleet. And now for the tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to build a new robot. We're going to use the Jetson Xavier PC, put it in a, this beautiful blue box that we've got from uh, Seed. It's got a really nice card holder and a blue box. And on top of that, we're going to connect 
an RP leader that we have also got from C. And then we're going to build a configuration that uh, uses the robot to scan the environment. And then we're going to move this PC around our offices and see the map. So let's go ahead and build our robot. So in this part of the tutorial, we are in the Nimbus system and want to install our new robot. So let's go ahead and click add a robot. And now we need to choose a plan. So let's use the free plan. Okay, and let's give our robot a name. Let's say Jetson. Okay, and let's click on create. What we're getting, this is an installation line and a Linux command line that will install the Nimbus agent on our robot. So let me go ahead and copy it here. And now let's use AnyDesk to remotely connect to the computer and install the Nimbus agent. So this is the Linux system. Let's go to uh, full screen mode. Okay. And now let's open a terminal and let's paste the, and let's paste the command. Let's type the password. And that's it, okay? We'll just wait for the Nimbus agent to be installed. So let's check that the Nimbus agent is installed. Let's just type Nimbus. And here we are, we have the Nimbus agent installed and we can just apply some command lines with uh, the Nimbus. So let's type Nimbus minus minus help. Okay, and then we can see all the different uh, commands that we can apply. Session, platform, configuration. We won't go into that uh, in this webinar, but we've just installed the Nimbus and let's go ahead for the configuration of our robot. Okay, so we have installed our robot and as you can see, the Jetson has been created and assigned to the robot fleet, to the default fleet. And now we can see it in the list of robots. So this is the Jetson robot. And we can click here on its configuration and see that it is empty. So what we need to do is to add two different components. The first is a driver for the RP lighter, which will output the laser scan. And the second is the mapping algorithm component that will take the scan as an input and will produce a map. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's click on the plus icon and let's search for RP lighter. And here we go. This is the Nimbus Slamtech RP lighter. Let's confirm. And as you can see, it can output the scan message. Let's click on the plus sign again and let's search for Hector mapping. We're just going to use the Hector mapping algorithm. So this is it. And confirm. Let's tidy up a bit. And all we, need to know, all we need to do now is just to stitch them up and let's take the scan output and place it in the scan input of the Hector mapping algorithm. And as you can see, the output of the Hector mapping, one of the outputs is the map. So this map can be streamed and viewed on the Nimbus stream section. So all we need to do now is just to deploy and then we can take our robot for a, a trip around our offices and click on the streams uh, bar and then just see how it scans and maps our office. And now let's have a look at a more complex behavior. We're looking at the configuration of our Lynx robot. And as you can see, it has a RealSense camera. This is the RealSense camera driver. And we can take the image raw output and give it as an input to this component here, the skeleton detection. So given an image in, it outputs a skeleton. So the skeleton output is the input for the person follower algorithm. So the person follower algorithm 
needs to know if we're telling the robot to stop or to go ahead and follow us and so on. So it needs the skeleton uh, text as an input. It needs the gesture type, okay? So we have here the gesture detection component. So we take the image row and we produce the gesture type. So this will be here commands like uh, follow me, stop, go ahead and so on. And we have also the image row. So given the image row and the gesture type and the skeleton, this algorithm uh, outputs and yields a command velocity to tell the robot where to do, what to do and where to go. And this will make the robot to follow the person. But the command velocity probably needs to be smoothed. So uh, instead of giving it directly to the robot's driver, what we're go going to do is to connect the command velocity to this algorithm that, uh, that actually smooths this uh, output. So the velocity smoother gets a row command of the velocity and it produces a smooth output, which is inputted into the Link's driver. So this tells the robot where to go and how to follow the person. So this is a bit, this is just an, a glimpse of the complex uh, things that you can do with Nimbus with these drag and drop ready-made components. So now let's go ahead and uh, turn on the, the links and see what we can do with it. So after we have seen what you can do with uh, Nimbus, I'll just invite you to go ahead and try Nimbus for yourself. You can enter the Cognitive website and go into our blog and see the post of try Nimbus on your laptop. And then even if you're using uh, a simple system without any robotic sensors or actuators, you can just install uh, pre-made components on your laptop and apply even algorithms that does not require GPU. And you can just use uh, it to test and play around with Nimbus. And also I'll invite you to uh, go ahead and request a, a demo if you would like to learn more. So thank you very much and goodbye.